Hello everyone, and today we'll be making the, um, let me see here. Today we'll be making a German half track. The last half track I made on my channel was a long time ago, and I've only made one half track on my channel, so I'm glad to be making another one. The reason I'm making this half track is because of this poll I posted four months ago, which um, I'm kind of kind of late, but um. If you want to vote for different cardboard things to be made, you can check out the polls on my channel. The German SDKFZ251 was probably the top German half track of World War II. It was used for the majority of the war and it had 22 variants. This half track, like any other half track, was used to transport soldiers across the battlefield, and it was a vital vehicle to the Germans in World War II. So without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. First thing are the references. The references I'll be using is this 3D model on Sketchfab that will be in the description below. And for the paint job, I'll be basing it off this picture I found off the internet. As said in other videos, I'll be trying to scale my half track according to this M3 lead. The first piece of the half track is this long rectangular piece of cardboard that I cut out. This rectangular piece is basically the bottom of the half track. And if you haven't noticed yet, this half track is a very complicated thing to make. Even the bottom of the half track looks overly complicated. So just to let you know, this is one of the harder builds to make. Next I glued on more pieces to that rectangular piece. For specifics, you can go to the 3D model and look under the half track. You should have a square zigzag like shape. Then near the front there's a long trapezoid shape. With this done you should have the bottom layer of the half track completed. Now I just build up from this shape, cutting out more shapes and gluing them on. I don't work on the sides though because the sides are really complicated. The front of the half track is made mostly by a bunch of trapezoids. And this makes it difficult to shape the front because trapezoids are hard shapes to, well, measure. The top trapezoid should only reach about this far into the half track. When I finished, I had this shape. As you can see, it might be really difficult to make this without using measurements like I am. And the reason I stopped at this point was because I couldn't continue making any parts of the half track without adding in the sides. And I thought making the bottom angled side of the half track would be a lot harder than making the top angled side. So we started on the top angled side. This might be hard because the top angled side won't have much support. But still, if you try, you could probably pull it off. For me, it took multiple tries gluing on the side and then peeling it off till I got the right shape I wanted. I also do this with the bottom of the tank as well. I don't cover up all the sides until I cover up the interior.
When you've finished, you should have the basic shape of the half track done. The only part of the half track I didn't cover up is the back. This is because the back is where the doors are, and I wanted the doors to actually be able to move, so I didn't cover it up yet. Now I work on some small details. Most of these just include hatches. Interior details are also added, such as the steering wheel and some chairs. The track coverings are also added on, and it's kind of tricky to add them because it's on a sloped surface. When you finish adding details and the track coverings, you should have something that looks like this. The final step to finish the shape of the half track is to make the wheels. The first wheel I make is the actual two frontal wheels. These are just cut out circles that are made with thick cardboard. And for the wheels details, I use some hot glue and some paper. These wheels may be hard to make because wheels in real life are more round. The wheels for the tracked area are made by just cutting out circles and cutting out rings. Then I poke 6 holes into the wheels with a toothpick to make it look like the actual wheels from the half track. This step is very time consuming and gruesome, so only do it if you're looking for a challenge. The difficulty of making these wheels is increased because there are two types of wheels, very similar but two types. The two gears for those tracks are also made as well. Then all the wheels are glued on with the tracked portion being overlapped. And this is the final product before painting. Next up is the painting step. As I said earlier, I'll be going off this reference image for the painting camouflage. I first coat the whole entire half track with a tan color. Then I use a very similar but greenish color to use for the camouflage aspect. I don't show this on camera for some reason, but after the green coat is covered, I outline all the green camouflage with some brown. This is because I want my tanks and stuff to have some difference in camouflage to make it more interesting. The tracks are made by cutting strips of cardboard and peeling it to get this corrugation. Then it's painted black and glued on. The front wheels are also painted black on the outsides. Once everything is dried, you should be officially done. Now you can plop some toy soldiers into it and invade whatever country you want to. Thank you to the people that participated in the poll. If you want to vote or request anything, you can check out the my community page on my channel. And finally, thank you all for watching.